Ahí ya se ven. Bueller. Bueller. Anyone, someone in my chair room, please tell me if you can hear me. Thank you, Rumpy. Thank you, thank you. All right, I will be back in a minute. Risk exposure statement, there is a risk of loss in training stocks, EDS, commodity futures, derivatives, and options, and cryptocurrencies. This risk can be substantial and therefore investors should carefully consider the financial durability prior to trading. Past performance is not indicated by future performance. The software, strategies, checklists, websites, and any other media websites, digital data for educational purposes only, should not be considered as an expressive by promise or guarantee that you will profit by loss in any limited in any manner whatsoever. This will be information flexible and responsibility for the outcomes of the deployment in all companies and trade, LLC, and any other media companies, agents, managers, owners, and customers, pharmacists, doctors, and agents. Please create a contract. Commodity futures training commission, CITC, rule 1141, hypothetical and simulated trading performance results of similar representations, some which are described here. No representation is being made of any kind of loss. Why do you achieve counsel? Loss is similar to virtual. In fact, there are frequently shot differences between hypothetical versus simulated performance results and the actual results. I suppose you achieve any particular training program. One limitation is the hypothetical performance results in that they are generally prepared with the benefit of hindsight. In addition, hypothetical training does not involve financial risk, and no hypothetical training requires completely account for the impact of financial risk in actual trading. For example, the ability to expand losses or adhere to a particular training program is by training losses on material points which can also adversely affect actual trading results. Because these traits are not actually being executed, the hypothetical results may not be well compensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as lack of liquidity. There are numerous other factors related to the markets in general, chief limitation of any specific training program which not fully accounted for in some way of training or in preparation of other better performance results at all, but which can never say after actual training results. This trade room and this webinars are not intended to mirror my trades or to give specific trade recommendations. Analysis of my share of trades and test trades, and I'm taking myself to my personal analysis. With all the terms of teacher trades, I have to ask trade and measure myself to make decisions. Trading is extremely risky, and you decide all my personal trades, so remember this, and potentially lose your entire company more. And that was probably when I continue to drive out to my trading account. The spreadsheet that I have to my personal spreadsheet, and I use that as own value and care, that means I'm going to be doing that for this you can see why there's no price into this spreadsheet as well as the price that trades are going to go on short. You have the ability to have this spreadsheet and your own values and you can find to confirm some prices to trade and you don't sell short for yourself. The spreadsheet is not telling you which fashion trade is and such a price and it's not price to go on short positions depending on the trading person inside the trade. All right, I think I got off that screen while to I made Bruce the presenter, but could you hear me, Bruce? <laughs> Bruce, can you hear me? How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Okay. What's going on? Not much. Not much. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks yeah. for uh, hopping on here to explain the awesomeness of this uh, market pulse. Keeps getting better and better. I, yeah, you know, I yeah. I mean, I uh, how are you guys using it? I mean, uh, I mean, what do you want me exactly to cover? There's there's so many different things to go through. Uh, I can go through each one uh, individually uh, yeah. if you like. Okay. That's basically it. I mean, so you know, back up. So this is what you know. The Market Pulse actually came to being because of me. I'm going to give myself some kudos on that. Uh, originally, the very <laughs> that is true. The very basic version, because I you know I, I came to you guys and said, hey, you need a we need a version of, I was using tick strike and I said, this is not enough. We need to see history. We need, there's so many more things you can do with this. I had no idea what you guys would do with it, like what you've done with it, but that's how it was born. And then they've just taken it to a new level with all these different options. And I don't even know the options. I, the main option that I was using before watching your webinar a couple of weeks ago on the, um, on the price change, I was just using the volume of balance. And that is a, is a very strong indicator in itself. So, and I started watching them, this price change and, you know, when the markets are dying down, like right now, like this time period, it's just, it's, you know, this is, this is what makes the markets do what they do when nothing's going on. And it, like, I, like I tell my trade room all the time, it's like, even if you're not trading off it per se, at least you can see what is causing these rotations, what's causing these whipsaws. And when you start to watch the price change just by itself, you're like, oh, that's why every time, you know, when a market's slow, Every time the thing makes an outsized move, it snaps back. Granted, you know, when the big money comes in here and starts to play, price change can happen for many, many prices because they're doing their business. And I'm sure they have that factored into their, into their, you know, PL when they when they run the thing, because they know 80, 90% of the time it's gonna trade like this. So it just keeps running and running and running. But um, yeah, I, I want you to go over all of them because I want to learn them because I just keep seeing more and more things with each thing that you guys introduce. Okay. 
Uh, sounds great. Well, I'll go through them um, pretty quickly then, uh, I think, each one. Um, in which market would you like me to take a look at? Uh, NASDAQ or ES or? Uh, what do you guys want? I'll take a vote in my room. What do you guys want? ES, NASDAQ, CL? Whatever. Put in your preferences, guys. I can't see the. Um... Yeah, you can't see it. I, I, I'll read it to you, though. They're all saying NASDAQ. And then mouthwash said, I, I see more of the volume pressure with the yes. Uh, so NQ is pretty much the vote. Do you want to okay. show that? Okay, great. Uh, all right, so I'll actually uh, close this one. Um, and we'll look at the E. I mean, if you want to come back to price change with this, because I think this is that's the best example. <laughs> like right now, it's every time the thing has a price change, the thing is reacted, right, this time of day. So yeah, any, yeah. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like use case scenarios, like, you know, we're still coming up with ideas here. Right. Uh, and um, and I, I'm really shocked, like, how good they are, uh, to be honest. Like, uh, um, you know, you continue to kind of goof around with this, play around with this. Um, and we find these re like really interesting use case scenarios. Um, so now it depends on the day. Like for example, this um, we're looking here at the at the Nasdaq, and I've got volume pressure and balance up right now. Um, and you know we're kind of been all over the place here just recently in, in recent price action. You know this really you know back and forth in here. Um, but um, uh, when it's back and forth like this in here, uh, this volume pressure is pretty amazing. Uh, so where um, I found a lot of value out of this was, you know, here, here you see, you know, that the, the um, uh, volume pressure just, you know, hitting the bid hard, uh, moving price lower. Uh, and we get several extreme readings in here. All right. So uh, it, this sub chart here, um, I'm finding invaluable. Uh, now, the, you know, hearing it is great. Uh, you know, so now, but that kind of just alerts me to what's going on. So like right now, look at all this buying coming in. All right, let's go to current market actually uh, and take a quick look. All right, so we're trending up. Uh, we're getting an extreme reading. Uh, we're hitting into, uh, the, we're at highs of the day here. We're hitting into high liquidity in here. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's still some uh, pressure in here, but it, it's, um, We'll see if it's you know going to mount and, and hit maybe we're we're just above the figure here 900, uh, and uh, now here's some divergence right so you know in fact here I was even kind of goofing around now this is in sim uh, I just want to show you guys uh, but you know here we go up here we have a divergence and now I'm looking for a pullback basically uh, and uh, because here's your extreme reading but I know there's still more buying coming in. And I'm just looking for it to come back down to, I don't know, maybe maybe to this transaction here at the figure. Uh, and right. So this that. is we have a pat, I have an actual pattern for this. And I've been I, I've been talking about this since June when I started watching it. So we have it as a continuation pattern like this one looks like or there's a fade pattern. So this one and what I've noticed is so you'll get the you'll get the spike like you see on your green there so many times the markets will retest that area that the, that the, the heavy buying came in. Or heavy yeah. sign, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just like retesting the volume events, the SI volume events. That's all I, that's all I ever talk about, right? So it'll retest. Then the, for me, again, this is why we have Yanni here to see you're taking things. For me, what I've seen as pattern wise, when it makes that new high, that's where you would get in and then you could put your stop below where that spike came in. So if that clears 625, 0625, that's where I would enter along, just, just scalp off of this, off of this setup. That would be a continuation. And then I would put my stop below where that green on the subchart came in. So, and it's very fleeting too, right? This isn't like the the SI subchart stuff, which is the king. Right. That that's major major volume. These are just you know little blips of heavy buying and selling you get taken advantage of. So, that's like right. for instance, like this one, I would not have taken this long until it made that new high. So I need to see it move away from the volume area, retest it, come back, make the new high, and then I get in, right? So I would avoid it. Now in this case. I would be looking for a short when this you can still do this either way now so if this so i was going to take a long now if this comes back retest that area which it looks like it kind of just did right there now it makes a new low i would take a uh, take a short so th th these are just ideas for scalping around the, these yeah. 
important areas. But you know, I want to know your take. I just wanted to go over. That's how I trade this one. And I know this one. I want to learn the other ones too because I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. So just to, but this will, this kind of creates a nice foundation to work from. Uh, so let, let me just continue on. And again, like, you know, uh, I, I really kind of shudder or hesitate uh, to say this is some sort of system. It is not. Um, it is just an indicator. Um, use this together with the order flow. Uh, that's where you're going to get the most uh, out of it here. So you still have to read the order flow uh, and understand, OK, we're making new highs. Um, I, I got my extreme reading. I know there was still more buying in here. Um, and we made a new a newer high up here, but there's no buying up here. So it's starting to exhaust out. I'm in, right? And uh, I'll take it at minimum down to, you know, this big transaction at the figure. Um, so now this is um, fading the outside edge and, you know, you're trading back in. Uh, now this can be, you can find yourself on the wrong side a lot of times. That's why you need the, the order flow and the confluences. Uh, re really important. Uh, uh, else, you're just going to get run over. Uh, this it may continue to you know hit extremes uh, again and again and again, and um, you, you know you'll you're just you're going to get a big loss. So uh, it depends on the environment. Maybe an, an environment like this is a new high here, and then we're not finding action above the figure, um, so we're going to fade it back in. Um, the uh, if if the environment was just a sideways action, well, God, this thing is is pretty amazing. You just like it's like a ping pong. Uh, you're actually getting the tops and 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 you know selling the tops and buying the bottoms almost. Well, it's the same um, with the price change too that I've seen. Like especially yeah. in this environment, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable yeah. when I'm watching it. Yeah, 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 it, it, exactly. So so the uh, let, let's add the uh, price change change one on here. Um, and then, well, there's there's something more I want to show here on. So, are, are most people using the the volume pressure imbalance, or are you using well, the? Um, yeah, most people in my room. That's all we've been using because that's all I've really concentrated on because that was one of the first first ones that I saw that I that I was watching that I saw some patterns. So that's this is what I've taught up until now, and then I've been talking about the price change. We don't have any like pure trades on it, but we talk about using it, like you said, with other things that confluence. So there's ways you can time your entries. You know, we have distinct rules for entering these SI events um, off of ATR and everything else. Well, you know, so many times I, you know, I complain that I'll get in and it's like the high or low tick. Well, you can help, you can use the price change to help you avoid that a lot of times. If that's the, if that thing's spiking as the price change, maybe wait a second, let it pull back, then get in that type of thing. So, but I've just, you know, I watched your video. I posted your YouTube from a couple of weeks ago and we talked about it and I've been watching it closely and, you know, it's, it's, it works until it doesn't work, but it works most of the time because these algos are, you know, 80%, 80, 90% of the market whipsawing people back and forth when the big money comes in. Yeah. Price change is going to, you're going to have a large price change that keeps going many times, but then it yeah. goes, then it, when they're done with their business, then it's right back to the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, yeah. I mean, I guarantee you pull up BS right now or whatever, even this on price change and you, you can see it work nonstop. This is the perfect time window to be doing it too. Between 10 and 12 is when you know, New York money, Chicago money, they go to launch the big money then the algos just turn on. And this has historically been my worst by far. I've lost millions and millions of dollars in this time period. And that's because this is when this stuff starts to happen. So if you're going to try to trade off the price change, then what I've been telling just from watching this, telling my room from just for the last week or so, this is the time of day you want to be messing around with if you're trying to scalp around it because there's nothing going on. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you, you could probably make a living just out of out of that. Um, uh, I mean, it's a lot of uh, scalping, like you said. Right. But, uh, you got to have the mindset for it. Absolutely. But. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to, I just wanted to make a note here between these are both volume pressure here. This was actually the first one uh, that we came up with uh, and it shows sellers and buyers here. Uh, and, uh, you know, the way the way it works is like over uh, the sellers here over the training period. If we go to the settings here um, over the training period, it, which is five minutes, just means that it's a constant five minutes of sliding data always five minutes uh, at the last you know minute or the last second out of five minutes the 501 slides out of the window 
and the new second is added. So that's how it works with this training period. The half-life period is kind of like a pullback rate because otherwise it would just go up and up and up, right? So this pulls it back to zero. Uh, and uh, the half-life means that, let's suppose a thousand contracts traded and then nothing else traded in 10 seconds, then those thousand, uh, which would also show here, uh, you know, let's say let's say a thousand hit the bid. Um, it would show a thousand here in the last five minutes. Only a thousand traded. It would be this number up here, a thousand. Uh, and then uh, that would be that would be it. If ten seconds oh, goes, nice by, yeah, sorry, no, no, ten, ten seconds goes by, uh, that number of a thousand is now going to be half. It'll be five hundred. If another ten seconds goes by after that. And nothing trades, it will be now 250. So it always retraces back to zero half the distance. It'll never get to zero. Um, you know, it'll always be half, but you know, it'll be essentially zero. Um, that that's that's these two settings here, and that's how they work. Um, and um, uh, I just want to cover um, the. Uh, the numbers in here, if you guys have any questions on that, that's this is the current five minutes right now. Uh, and this little white line is showing the 70%, uh, which is the threshold here uh, that we have. You can play around with that and put in input whatever you want. Now, there's a big difference, though, between these two. They're, they're not the same uh, because you might see a lot of times you'll see both buying and selling here uh, pick up tremendously, like at the open or in the close. Right? There's all sorts of uh, volume action, but the imbalance is going to be probably pretty close to zero. But this, you're going to get pings on both sides here. right? So that's the difference. Uh, it's very similar and very much akin to the volume dots in here. If we go to the volume dot settings, um, right now I have it on uh, volume delta, buy minus sell. Uh, if I put in total volume, though, it's 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 everything, buying and selling, okay? So that, that's that's how it works. And that's why we have both um, uh, widgets here uh, to play around with. So depending on what you like, I, I don't know. I, I find the, the volume and balance uh, uh, a bit clearer. That's what I care about. Uh, maybe other people don't. They wanna really see the buyers and sellers. You've got it as well. So uh, let's, let's move on to the next one um, and we'll go through, um, if you can just go down the line, I mean, start at the top and then just go down the line. Uh, yeah, I kind of prefer not to. <laughs> um, uh, but we'll go through all of them. Uh, yeah, because I, I definitely want to know what what each one is, even if you're not completely versed on all of them. No, at no, least I, 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 know, I know them all. Um, it, that's that's no no problem. Uh, okay. We'll go through it, uh, but maybe kind of in the order they were released or more order of importance here, we'll do that. So okay. um, price change. Ah, actually, before I even get into price change, let's go over one more thing in here on um, the uh, volume and balance. All right, so uh, looking at the NQ and the volume and balance, um, this is a new feature in here. And this is, Scott, you and I talked about this a bunch uh, in the past. So what you can now do uh, with volume pressure and balance as well as volume pressure uh, is you click on the drop down here and there's a checklist. We're only looking at the NQ. Well, we can look at um, the NQ plus Apple plus the ES or any symbols that I have open here. And, and it will it'll make an aggregate of all of them together. This is really cool because this means that um, maybe you want to look at one that's just all the stock indexes, or maybe you want to keep your NASDAQ uh, as a separate one, a separate uh, widget, and maybe you want to look at just stocks or like, let's say, suppose you're a tech, you're, you're trading the NASDAQ, you're, you want to look at uh, the biggest players, uh, you know, like Apple, Microsoft, and, you know, uh, Amazon or, you know, uh, NVIDIA, uh, Magnificent Seven, whatever it might be. Um, so uh, you can uh, use this here uh, and... Um, uh, you can see this, there's um, uh, now it, it, it's updating here uh, and, it, and it's showing me I'm looking at these two symbols here. OK, so uh, it'll it'll take a little while to, to load sometimes. 
uh, but um, uh, this is you can see Apple and Tesla here uh, and, it's, and it's VPI so AA you know AAP um, uh, L is the Apple symbol and then TS uh, LA is Tesla it just shows the first two and then it says volume pressure imbalance is that going to load on the sub chart as well or just the widget uh, I think it is just the widget here uh, because if we look at the um, uh, the sub chart, uh, it is um, uh, let's let's jump over to actually uh, Apple and Tesla. Okay, so it does it does show. Um, okay, what about Tesla? Yeah. Okay, so it will show on the individuals. But if I so if I included Nasdaq with Apple and Tesla, will it show on Nas on the NQ subchart? No. No. If you include the NQ, yes, it will. That's what I mean. So if okay. I click that as well. Yeah. It, and then what if I have Nasdaq by itself? Will it show two different ones? Is that that would actually be very yeah. helpful? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's let's do that. Um. Uh, in fact. Um. So we'll add mm -hmm. a new one. Okay, and um, when you when you click create, it's the one on top, uh, and uh, we'll look at um, volume, pressure, and balance. And we're just okay, was that volume or order? Or I'm sorry, that's order book pressure and balance. Yeah. Volume I want to learn about that. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, we'll look it's at uh, NASDAQ. 297 contracts. <clears throat> Wait, but you want to do another one that has the hybrid NASDAQ, Apple, and Tesla, right? That's what I wanted to know. You know what I'm saying? So will it show the NASDAQ and NQ? No. And then you do another one with all three. Will that show on the NASDAQ chart as well? Uh, n no. Um, it, it's, it's only for the symbols that, that you select. But that's what I'm saying. But you didn't, this one you just picked NQ, the second one, right? Right. I want, could you pick NQ, the combination of NQ, Apple, Tesla? Yeah. And then what it, that that will draw another line on the NASDAQ chart is what I'm asking on the sub chart. Because then you can really start to see some differences between what NASDAQ by itself is doing and then the, the hybrid of the three type of thing on one chart. Let's see. I, I'm not sure about that, uh, to be honest, uh, Scott. I haven't gone through that scenario. That's what I'm here for. There, there it is. So you, do, yes, the answer is yes. Very there's cool. Two, there's there's two lines on here. Um, so uh, uh, now uh, this is something to take note here. Uh, it's a little quirky thing in the in the interface. When you have two lines on here, and you, you might not know which one is which. When you hover over, you'll see which one it is. Right, you can color them differently too, right? You can color them differently, but only in the sub chart here. It is not in the settings here. You do not see the, the coloring, right? That's the quirky thing. Right, so you, you gotta right click you and then it's right color. click down here and you go to colors right. here. Right, right, right. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's <laughs> let's select, uh, you know, for, for this one, we'll just make uh, uh, the line uh, uh, yellow, or hold on here. This is uh, three of them. Okay, and we'll, whoops, sorry. We'll make the um, uh, color here for the, the line color will be yellow. Okay, and we'll click okay. Or I'm sorry, that's the extreme. Um, shoot, that's not yeah, right. just line color. So Actually, leave it like that because that, that's how I have mine. <laughs> that's how I have mine. We'll make, it, uh, we'll make it blue or this kind of teal. Uh, and then on the, um, it's kind of a pain, but um, we're, we're getting there. Uh, and then we'll make it this kind of uh, pink or maybe. That's great. That's dark, great for me. Thanks, Bruce. Dark, I really dark purple. I'm colorblind. <laughs> Can't see any of those damn colors. Uh, I'm sorry, Scott. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and and then uh, we'll make the line here yellow. Okay. So uh, th this way, whoa. You guys can't hear that, can you? 
Mm -hmm. uh, I've got it on way too loud. Um, oh yeah, that thing can drive you nuts. It, it, it can. I bring it down to like, I don't know, <laughs> three or five or something. But like you have the, if you have the five minute price change on, oh my goodness gracious, there's some days I almost broke my computer, broke my screen. <laughs> I can't, a lot of times you can't find the widget, which one it is, if you have a bunch of them open. Yeah, yeah. So, so here you go. Now you've got your, you've got confluences or uh, correlations in here, uh, and uh, it's already given you a good one. You know, uh, you can see that uh, this is um, way too much on the Nasdaq, and the, and the tech wasn't doing it, and tech is now starting, or at least Apple and Tesla is selling off. That's cool. Right. So That's cool. here, here's your a huge divergence. So this is a beauty right here. Just, just a beauty, uh, you know. Trade it down to the bottom of the range, uh, take some off, and see if you can, you know, if it might go down to this range, you know. And of course, um, once once the, once the liquidity got their fill on top of it, is they, they got to get their fills up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, so uh, uh, yeah, so you've got that option now as well. Uh, so they the developers did a really great job on this, uh, uh, and this is we've only gone over two features in here, um, well, three, uh, volume pressure, volume pressure imbalance, and then multiple instruments uh, for volume pressure uh, that you can do as well, okay? So, uh, wait, so wait, wait, what's the difference between the volume pressure and the volume pressure imbalance? I didn't hear that. Didn't yeah, guess. I was showing you the buyers and sellers, right? It's, it's very similar to, in concept, it's very similar to the volume dots. Like uh, right now, if I look at volume dots, for example, um, you know, okay, it's, so you're, it's you're saying the imbalance, the imbalance is like the delta. The yes, delta. the delta. The, the imbalance it. is the delta for sure. Yeah, you, de you definitely said that. I just didn't catch it. <clears throat> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I miss you, Scott. I, I miss I miss kidding you. Oh, it, those were <laughs> those were good days. Um, uh, <laughs> Got to hop back, hop back on the webinars. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I go, are you, are you on a rant? Are you ranting? Well, I've been ranting a lot lately. <laughs> um, Big Hal from the room says, please ask Bruce to show where to turn on text alerts. <laughs> please what? what ask Bruce on where to turn on text alerts for these. So oh, you know okay. how they have text alerts so, now? So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, another thing now. They are on uh, uh, text alerts. Um, if you come up to the alerts here. Oh, I wonder where, um, who gave, uh, gave them that idea. Yeah, this uh, there's some guy who rants a lot. <laughs> um, gave us this idea. Uh, so uh, you can keep this window open uh, and uh, uh, and get the text alerts here if you if you don't want to get the sound alert. Is there a way to turn that off or is it just? Yeah, yeah. Gonna... So the, the sound alert or the text alert? The text alert. Um, yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah the, the text alert you can you can also uh, uh, turn off uh, as well. Um, let's see, I know you can. I don't spend too much time on this. But I mean, it's not that big. Who cares if it's shown on the? Well, I mean, it depends. Like you, you, you especially like you, you're going to want to see a, a stops and icebergs alert, but you're not going to want to see maybe all this volume pressure. Alert. Yeah, true, true. Um, so I don't that, though. Uh, yeah, I don't actually see that um, uh, feature here, but I'm pretty sure you can. Um, I just see volume, um, which is. Kind of weird. I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, I thought you could if you wanted to. Um, How about configure alerts? Is that yeah, here, yeah, that's that's where it is. Um, okay, so uh, here, um, yeah, I think we can just uh, notifications right here. Was that just sound though? Huh? Is that just for the sound? Yeah, but uh, what about I can remove alerts here? Here we go. Okay, yeah, that that would probably do it. Okay. So if, yeah, so it stays on, but it just doesn't give so, me the alert. Okay. Mm, mm, not sure. Not sure if that's doing the trick or not. Doesn't look like it. Um, how about filter? I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. All right. Let, let's just move on. Um, okay. So, because we got a lot to go through. 
Right. Uh, so, so we've only gone through volume pressure, volume pressure imbalance, and then adding multiple uh, symbols. Now you can add multiple symbols uh, to. Let's, let's we'll just clear these right now. Um, to uh, many many of these in here. Uh, in fact, um, I'm going to clear. I'm going to clear all of them again here. So we'll just start afresh. Click on create, uh, and then now we'll look at price change for Nasdaq. Uh, and uh, note how obviously price change. There's 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 not multiple that you can select here. Uh, it's price change for one instrument, um, and and then that's it. Uh, so um, price change pretty pretty straightforward here. Uh, the even the the settings are even more straightforward uh, in here. There's um, just the training period, and that's it. Uh, so, uh, you know, play around with whatever it is. Uh, Scott, I, I've always thought that, and I keep referring to you in the um, in the webinars as well, like this is perfect for ATR. Um, you know, you have you actually have a sliding kind of ATR here. Uh, so, you know, it will update every five minutes, basically, or it's always updating. But like, you know, you're going to get, if it's more volatile period, you're going to get a different ATR now. Um, so, you know, do we, are we getting an extreme on, on the, um, uh, on the buy side? No, not yet. Uh, the QI sites for sell NQ, 157 contracts. So a note, note auction just came out. So of course this is that, this is the perfect time of, to not use the price change. No, it's, it's not bad. It's actually not bad because it's demonstrating the, uh, look, look, now we're getting, we're it's starting to sound off here. Um, it's just hitting the 70%. The, price 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 price. the issue with using the price change here is, you know, the, the this, is where, sell RT. this is where the algos like get, this algo gets run over because the thing can have a, just keep going as a price change, right? When big money comes True. in here unloading. True, but look, we just got a reading now. This just blew it out right here, right? So this move back up actually demoed it pretty well that like now we're getting an extreme reading because it, it, it retraced all the way back up here and then broke out. Uh, so uh, it, it actually did work. If it was here, yeah, I, I would say, I mean, you can even see it. You're getting an extreme Here's reading. Here's the Weiss Iceberg Cell RT, 178 contracts. So um, uh, that, that makes sense uh, that you'd get the extreme reading here. Um, and then uh, you get another one down here though. Uh, as well, but then you don't get anything on the buy side until it comes up here. So it's still working. Uh, the, the no, I know it is... works. I'm saying as a tradable where you have the confidence to step in front of, as soon as that thing spikes, you have the confidence to step in front of it, right? When when it's really dead, that's when it snaps back, snaps back, so it's, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. When you got something coming out, if you, you know, you got big money playing, like after this note auction right now, you're asking for potential run over if you see a spike it'll keep a lot of times it'll keep spiking is what i'm saying it'll keep going yeah that's true that that's true i mean uh that that's where like again it it, it comes down to um uh, like like this one right now i mean it did it here and then it pulled back uh and now we're getting another another nice move and it's been it's pretty extreme um but um uh yeah i i, I agree with you uh on that and it makes sense though too, like, you know, start to look at maybe double your ATR uh, or whatever it might be, because uh, uh, you, you know, you're, you're looking for um, a kind of wound up instrument and then you're looking for a move away from that uh, value area. Right, so um, what, what do you think, this is what we've you know, been talking about trying to figure out, like if guys that do want to play this as a scalp type of thing, what do you think, I know this is going to vary, but what have you seen as far as the pullback? Is it usually, you know, an ATR, a half ATR? I know it's all contingent on the price move, but, you know, because you do see reactions, but a lot of times it's only like, you know, three points and then it'll go up to another level and then three points. Like, have you, have you seen any, any kind of tendencies as far as when it does spike on the sub chart there, how much it does pull back? Like, is it related to anything that you can see? Yeah. There's no, I mean, it's it's such a blunt um, instrument in in this sense. Um, it's just showing you over five minutes or whatever input you you uh, uh, select here, um, uh, the price change over those five minutes. Um, right, but I'm saying so. Like, like look at this 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 last one. It spiked on the sub chart there for for actually for a little bit, and then it's it pulled back. It just pulled back 20 points. 
the yeah. one right before that, go to the one right, right, right there. No, right there. You were just on it. Right there. That one pulled back about 10 points, eight, eight to 10 points. So yeah. what I'm saying is if you've seen any tendencies, once it spikes, you know, of course you're never going to know it's, it's all relative, but how far it actually pulls back after the spike. Is it like a percentage of, I think we just got to play around with this because it, it could be a percentage of ATR. It could be a percentage of, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? Like how much could you expect? So say I saw, I hear the thing go off. It's at 70% of the of price change for the last five minutes. I fade it as soon as I see that spike. What can I expect on the pullback is what I'm trying to figure out. I know, it, I know it's all relative, but have you seen any tendencies is what I'm saying, how far it will pull back after the spike? Is it, there's, there's no way to determine um, uh, because let's suppose a whole bunch of sellers show up here, you know? Right. No, I know it's fleeting, but I, I, I'll bet you it's, you know, when it's really dead, it's related to something. It's probably like, you know, half of a, or a full minute ATR or half of a five minute ATR. I'm just trying to help guys that want to trade this. Maybe, I mean, there's, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can wait for a, an opposing spike too. The other way that works all the time in dead markets too, but I, I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with some rules going forward of potentially using this trade. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I can answer it maybe this way because I don't, we don't know. Um, but y you know, this is a momentum move at this point, right? right. So it, this pullback here, this is a low volume pullback. Um, and where would you look for it to go in terms of order flow? Well, pre pretty simple. Uh, you know, you'd first look at this little cluster here, which it already did. Uh, and then you probably look at this little cluster down here and it did kind of hit the top of that. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you look for it and this would be like the point of control of that little cluster, you know, somewhere right in there. Now, right. you know, that would be if, if buyers are moving this market, well, you know, you look for maybe a pullback into here and look for buyers to start to come back in again uh, in these areas in here, for example. Then get out. Type of thing. Uh, well, no, I mean, uh, yeah, either or, or buy, uh, right, right. you know, uh, because a, another way to use this, it, it, it's um, the opposite way. Not when you get a signal, you you exit on the signal. Right, right. Yeah, you're looking at a kind of an you know, opposite opposing view where you're waiting for the signal, waiting for the pullback, then getting in type of thing. Yeah, so right. it's the context of the price action here. Right. Right. So so uh, it, it's going to give you an extreme reading. But what does that mean in this context? Well, we're uptrending here. Uh, it's a momentum move. Uh, so, you, you know, and, and it's a fundamental move as well. So if that's the case, uh, then you're looking for this liquidity and, and maybe a, a, maybe the next level of liquidity up here. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, you know, the volume pressure is in here. Uh, so now does the price change? You know, how, how does that relate uh, uh, to it? Uh, as well, you know, so, right. um, yeah, there, there's kind of different ways to slice and dice it, uh, uh, in, in terms of, of this one here, like this would be your momentum move, your pullback. And then I don't know, I would be looking to get back in and try to trade it back up here. And when I get another extreme reading on the price change, I would start thinking of exiting. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's great to get other views on things, right? Like I see it one way, you see it another, or 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 potential in it, um, opportunity in it, and that and it's good because then you come up with new ideas. And this is what I try to tell my trade room every day. It's like I'm telling, giving you my take on how I view things. You know, you can you can run with it, you can say I don't like that or whatever, but it, at least getting another take, right? Like I'm getting another take on how to view this, listening to you, and like I did when watching that webinar too. And that's right. the whole point of trade, like in trading, that's what. You always need to be trying to be evolving and, and picking up new stuff. Like if you want to continue to compete, because things change very quickly in this business yeah. <laughs> as far as yeah. what's profitable, what's not. <clears throat> the and only it, mainstay that I've ever you know really seen is the SI indicator has basically worked for seven years. So it's like that has been pretty foolproof for seven years as far as how these markets react to these areas. And that's why it's the core of my training. But yeah. it's always good to, to get other takes, other people's takes on what they're seeing. They have experience in it. Yeah, I, I'm amazed by by this this product um, and the flexibility of it. Uh, it is pretty incredible. One, I just need to to let you guys know about this as well. Um, that this is going to it's 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 like a separate product basically. It's a separate kind of trading platform or a separate product completely. It's not 
it's built on an API that works with the API of uh, Bookmap. So what does that mean? That means that if I open up another instrument, for example, let's just uh, uh, open up a, another instrument like Trader Map Pro, okay, and filter the uh, the 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 map here, okay. So in especially in Nasdaq, this is kind of an important one. I, I'm just going to do for uh, keep it simple in here. Um, I already have one here. I'm just going to click play, and um, uh, it opens up a new symbol here, and it's filtering order size um, a filter by percentage of chain not changed um, uh, order flow uh, so what that means is like if if i take a look at um it's this one actually um if i take a look at the nasdaq here uh see see this kind of uh halo around price action uh the, these algos that are are you know stacker algos basically you know always positioning themselves and then once they uh decide to trade then they'll just stay in the order book and, and they won't move away. Uh, so that happens in the NASDAQ a lot recently. Sometimes it happens in the S&P. We can filter that out with the Trader Map Pro and then we can run Market Pulse based on that um, uh, that filter for you know the order flow uh, in balance or order book in balance. So what I'm trying to say is we can have indicators working off of indicators. Uh, and um, uh, this API here is also prog programmable. Uh, in the near future, we, we hope to start to even make execution algos based off of these. So it, automatic uh, execution algos. So, it, and that's all possible here. So it's, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's this, uh, what we call is broadcast API. We are broadcasting the API from this particular uh, indicator. Uh, it's its own. It has its own API. So there's tremendous flexibility here. Uh, so for you, you guys, that uh, let me know if you have any questions on that. Uh, I'm really excited about that though because uh, you know that opens up a whole new world. Uh, basically, I mean, we can have the analogy I've been using. If if uh, anyone is the best analogy I can use is if you uh, use Excel spreadsheets, for example, uh, and, you know, you input your data, you run ma macros off of your data, and, you know, you got all this stuff going on in, in your data. Uh, but if you then take that data and filter it in a pivot table, okay, I hope this analogy uh, reaches reaches people. Uh, now you've got specific filtered data from that main spreadsheet. Uh, and then you have that filter data and then you can run those same macros or same features on that newly filtered data from the main spreadsheet. So um, uh, that's basically what you're able to do with this broadcast API. You're able to take uh, the main book map chart like with um, the uh, volume pressure or maybe the order book uh, and then you can filter the order book and then you can run the market pulse order book in balance off of that filtered order book. Interesting. Uh, and hopefully soon, like maybe in the next half year or so, we then we'll have uh, maybe execution uh, automated trading off of those as well. So yeah, when I continue to tell my trade room, it's, it's having book maps like having your own trading firm working for you that keeps coming coming to you with new ideas and new you know, Net gas stocks, yeah. stocks sell new products it's 177 <clears throat> contracts pretty incredible yeah i mean it's like santa's workshop uh over here i mean <laughs> right. uh, i i can't believe it i'm like what what did you guys come up with <laughs> you know so so uh and they just keep going and i can't keep up with the educational materials um so uh anyway right. uh, uh the um so I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, you, you can run, you know, things off of each other uh, and, and look for more of it in, in the future. Um, so uh, uh, I'll, I just wanted to mention it. That's all. Let, let's we'll continue on with uh, Market Pulse, though, uh, and go through some of the other ones in here. So any any questions on price change? Uh, no. 
that uh, in combining the two cell, this is a while ago, so I don't even know if you were going to remember what it was, but it's five minutes ago. In combining the two cell ice events in NQ, would you combine the stop cell event before that too? I don't why mouthwash, what are you referring to? We weren't going over the stops and stuff. Maybe if you were you were just so asking you mean, separate is he questions. Talk, he's talking about stops and icebergs confluence, maybe. Yeah, I'm assuming he's typing something now. So but yeah, let's get to the next ones and I'll get it. Oh, that wasn't a question for you. So okay. Um yeah, I'm I'm I'll look at it, but yeah, probably. I always am combining anytime I can, as long as they're not too far apart time wise or space wise. Um, yeah, Bruce, if you can go to the just go through the other ones because I this is why I wanted the webinar for me. I okay. want to know what these other ones are. Okay, so so um, the uh, um, yeah, let's go through it. All right, so we've gone through two uh, or three basically. Um, and then uh, let's go through. Um, What's the order book? What is that? Yeah, the order book. This is a great one. Um, and boy, I, I tell you, like, we're also working on something more than the order book as well. Um, and then I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but uh, we'll just look at NASDAQ and we'll look at order book pressure. Okay. Hit play. Uh, now, what this is going to show here, uh, and we zoom in here. As soon as it loads, I'll go to the settings. It's lo it takes a little while to, to load for some of this because it's not just volume, it's like the entire book. Uh, so it's going to take a, a little bit longer. Come on. I wait for my trade room. One. Watch gold that last stop run that 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 little guy's bearish. I, I would trade double size. I'm personally gonna trade double size off of that last stop run licks and barks because I think gold's going to zero probably today. Zero. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Heck of a move. <laughs> um so uh Jeez, it doesn't. It shouldn't take this long. Um, oh, well, while that's loading, MW in my room says it's, it seems like price change settings can work best for trend confirmation after it breaks out of a consolidation range. You work, agree with that? Um, well, usually, I mean, on a, on a on a break outside of a consolidation range, uh, usually you get your your price change. You get an extended move. Uh, and your price change is, I, I, I think you have to be really careful using price change at that point. Uh, because like Scott was saying, it, it, you'll get a price change. It'll start to ping. It'll start to say it's like, you know, overbought or whatever. Um, but it will continue. Uh, and uh, it usually maybe you get like double the move of a regular ATR at that point. Uh, so be, be kind of careful on that one. Uh, depending on, you know, if it's going to move away from the range, you're, you're probably going to get that extended move. Uh, that, that's just, uh, but in the range, boy, it's, it's a beauty. Um, and um, uh, play around with the settings. Uh, simply to, to play around with the settings, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, look in the sub chart uh, and then look where you're getting your, your extreme readings. Uh, and you know, match them up to some of the moves uh, and that's it. All right. So now this one here is actually, uh, this one's kind of complex. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's a beauty, but it, it's, it's complex now because there's four colors in here and there's four different readings in here. Uh, so note the, uh, let's make this bigger actually. Um, all right. So the, um, uh, the sellers here, see, see how it's is this bright red? Okay, because we're getting an order book imbalance on, on the offer here. Uh, they're adding on the offer. 
it's a positive number and it's this bright red color. Okay, that's the imbalance that we're seeing or, you know, here from the last five minutes. Note here, it's this dark green and it's a negative number. That means they're pulling from the, uh, from the bid. All right, and if that's the case, and this is where you can combine it, to, to me, this is the holy grail, basically. Uh, if you can get that combination between order book and balance and volume pressure, you've got something uh, really, really powerful. So play around with uh, maybe both of them and look, look for like when they're, and we're gonna try to combine them uh, together as well. Uh, but see how this, this has been pretty consistent here and we still see sellers coming in. Until we see this order book flip and we start to see some buyers, we are sell side. So, so, so this isn't showing transactions. This is showing what's just coming in as resting orders in the order book. That's right. But, it, but it's showing the, the offers are being put in right now. They're being pulled and bids are being put in. That's correct. Got it. So well, now really... we, we are starting to see that shift now. Okay. So now wow. look how it, this is dark red where it was bright red. And note that it was a positive number. Now it's negative. So now they are pulling on the offer and they are adding on bid. This is a, a bright green uh, and uh, it is a positive number. Okay, it's just, just switching a little bit right now. And then what, what's it showing on the subchart? What, what do you have as the threshold and what threshold is yeah. that showing? So the it's the uh, the same thing here. So here's our dark red, okay? Uh, and, and this is, it, if you hover over it, it says seller's percentage, all right? And then this one up above says buyer's percentage. That's so that's where the sellers were pulling. Uh, the sellers uh, here were were pulling. Well, that that's going to take a little bit to like, get used to mentally, as far yeah. as it's kind yeah. of a opposite of what how you would view yeah. it like, as far as traded volume. But that that's really really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's fascinating uh, to to take a look at this. Like, so they're pulling up here, and we're not finding enough buyers to 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 trade it through, even though they're kind of like you know pulling it away. Uh, from the market. Now we are. Now we're finding buyers and they're still pulling. Okay, well, then buyers should be able to take it back up to the top of this range here, right? I would I would look for that. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe they can even get more. Uh, uh, as long as we, you know, this this context between these, the, the order book and, and the buyers. So here they come and they should be able to, you know, they're still pulling and they're still adding on the bid. Okay, now they're not adding a whole lot on the bid yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, they are, and, uh, maybe if they added a lot more in here, we'd see that move quicker, uh, back up into here, you know, something it's, like that. It's pretty amazing, man. If I would have had the stuff when I was scalping, I would have made 10 times what I made. This yeah, it's, it's incredible. <clears throat> I mean, like, uh, and we're just getting, we're just getting into it here. Uh, so, you know, like, like I said, we haven't come, you know, I'm still playing around with it and still showing it and demoing it to people all the time. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the, in the webinars, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so this has been working out pretty nicely. It takes some off up here. Uh, and then if I, or maybe I wait, maybe I wait until I see a shift in the order book first. Don't worry about the, the aggressors. I look for a shift in the order book first when I see that order book shift. And then maybe I see some selling coming in just a little bit. I'm out or I take some you off. You can see where least. you can use this, like even at important levels, like. Even like retest of SI events, like you see the, you know, the, the it gets up there and the buyers start pulling and then and then the sellers start loading the order book. This is a different way of looking at it because it's not really traded volume, but you can see intentions type right. of thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow, uh, this is this is pretty unbelievable. So uh, uh, yeah, you know, now we only had one extreme reading in here so far. Mo most of what we've gotten insight from was just kind of looking at it. Um, so let, let's play around with the uh, settings in here. Right, but look, look what happened after that extreme reading, the market went straight up. So it's like, that was the max of, of them pulling offers, right? Yeah. And then the market yeah. basically held there and went straight straight up. So that you can glean this from, you know, in certain areas of, of how the markets reacted, if people were willing to buy or, you know, have their orders resting or not. I mean, there's, this is a whole nother, this is a whole nother ball game with this yeah. stuff. Yeah, see, see the shift starting to, to take place now? Okay, now this is just, it doesn't mean it's gonna go down all of a sudden. It might be back and forth in here for a bit, you know? I mean, right. it, you know, it maybe maybe it is a, sh a total shift and we do see it drop all the way back down to here. Right, but, but the thing is, this is what I say all the time with any indicators, like 
um, you know, even, you know, the, uh, any of the, like the volume of balance and stuff, this stuff happens all day long. It's like looking at the bubbles, but if you can apply this to important areas to get an idea, like, you know, if, even if say I got a position long on right now and I'm looking at an area to get out and then I watch this thing and I say, well, why do I, this is what I say in my webinar is just with the actual traded volume. I'm like, well, if there's nobody willing to sell here, why do I want to get out of my long? Well, you can That's use true. this too. You get up to an area where you're contemplating getting out and you see the sellers keep pulling their offers. Well, why the hell do you want to sell if they, if they don't even want to have their, they're not, not only are they not transacting, they're not even, they're not even willing to have their, their sell orders in the order book. <laughs> right, exactly. Like that, that, this is, yeah, wow. Very exciting. Um, so, so uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited about this this stuff too. Um, uh, I can't wait until we can kind of connect it with execution, but uh, um, I've been pressing for that. So now we're getting extreme readings, right? So uh, uh, now look look what happened here. And um, down here, note how it was red down here. Uh, and then this is still, um, well, this is buyers here, okay? uh and um so that's buyers pulling oh because because it, it's negative there you go yeah that, okay, now that just so, clicked so this, this is they're buyers pulling. pulling right? right so that's why it's this dark green down here okay right so, so uh, for the example if it comes up i, I don't want to keep interrupting you with my my ideas when you're actually telling us what it means <laughs> but again if it comes up to an area and you're thinking about getting out and you see sellers actually hitting and then you see buyers pulling like get the hell out you know? yeah like, yeah. So, so you, you know, it, this just note that this is this is kind of a more complex uh, interface. It's showing you actually four different things. And that confused me when I first saw. It. I was like, "What? What are you guys doing? Like, you you got it all wrong, you know?" And like, uh, but but it made sense to me after they explained it. Uh, and um, uh, I it, it, I think it's excellent. Uh, just note the different colors and the, and the negative and positive values. Uh, and it's the same down here as well. So here, uh, you know, they're they're pulling uh, on the um, uh, on the buyer's percentage, uh, and then in here uh, it's switched over. These are uh, this is sellers here, and the sellers percentage uh, they're pulling. Okay, so uh, y you got to kind of match them up. Like this, there was a crossover here of these two lines basically, um, and. Uh, uh, you know, ho hover over in these areas will we'll give you the kind of insight uh, as well. The only issue I see here with the, with the subchart, I mean, you can only have so many things on the damn subchart. So if I want to look at a bunch of different things, like there, there's a right. 50 things on the subchart. Is there a yeah. way to like, I've asked this before, is there a way to like add another subchart? If you're, if you're willing to lose screen space, could I put another subchart right on top of this one where I could have the order book and balance, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just independent. Yeah. Or I can add whatever I want on that next subchart, but they're not all on top of each other. There, there, there isn't. Um, it's been requested um, uh, a lot in the past, uh, so um, I believe it's on the roadmap. Uh, yeah, that's but, especially uh, they've got to do that. The more stuff you add, you got to yeah. give us a fighting chance to watch it, right? I can't even even with the price change on my webinars. I'm going back and forth. I'm turning it on and turning it off. It's like if if, you know, if I elect for my screen space to have five of these, then that's my prerogative, but give me right. the option to put five of them on there. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Well, here, here's here's kind of a, a funny workaround. Um, uh, let me let me show you this here. Uh, so uh, really, really cracked me up a user. Uh, uh, I, saw, I saw it from um, one of our um, Bookmap Academy uh, users. Um, he, um, he, he opened up, you know, you, you can open up a, um, uh, oh yeah, I gotta have it selected here. Sorry. Um, you can open up multiple symbols now um, in Bookmap, like Trader Map Pro will open up multiple symbols and then filter the the, uh, the same um, symbol. Yeah. So here, instrument copy, right? And uh, you can you can create it here if you want, but you can also now create it here uh, as well. And it'll say you're gonna open up a duplicate, and you want to do that, and you go, yep, I want it. Uh, so. Um, Yep, there it is. And uh, now we have a copy of it, right? Uh, and then in here, uh, let's um, add, um, yeah, I don't I know if we can show, I don't I don't know if I can show um, stops and icebergs. I'm, well, I'm even, sure. even, even, even so, who cares? I'll have a stops and icebergs on the main one. And then these copies, I can have one that has the order book and pressure. Or That's right. Balance. Like, 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, so you still you, have to you, toggle, you, but it's better than nothing. Better to have an 85 things no, on no, one. Subject. No, no, here, here, here's what he did, <laughs> which I thought was re really funny. So let's do it this way. Let's look at cumulative volume delta in the subchart here. Uh, and then uh, let's look at NASDAQ uh, with the um, market pulse here. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Let me double click on this one and, and pop it out. Okay. Oh, I see. He had his sub. I got it. Overlaid it, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so it was, it was, yeah, pretty, pretty creative. I have to hand it to him. Like pretty, pretty creative solution here. Um, so he made his own sub chart that's visible. That, that's right. Yeah. Above, so, above the other one. That's just a pain in the ass. So when you click the wrong one and then you lose the other one, but yeah. Right, right. So, um, but uh, there's, there's something that's important you need to do if you want to do this. Okay. Uh, you know, now that means you're pretty like, you know, honed in on like one uh, particular instrument. But here, basically, now what you need to do is invoke uh, this feature here, synchronize charts. Uh, and then now if I zoom on this chart here, it will also zoom on the other chart below. Okay, so uh, uh, that's how, you know, you, you can, you can um, uh, match these up here. What am I doing? I'm looking at gold here. Is this gold? No. It's smart it's because NASDAQ. it's going to zero, so you might want to watch it go to zero. <laughs> so now I got <laughs> NASDAQ here. All right, and I got market pulse here. Uh, and um, uh, and then I can sync them up here as well. So let me just align them a little bit better in here. Oh, you, you get the idea. Um, but. Uh, Know, something like something like this come back okay that looks pretty good and then now sync the charts so if i zoom on nasdaq here it should zoom also on the one on all charts it'll zoom on all charts so they're all synced uh to the same zoom levels so there you go so you can actually have two different uh, uh right. sub panels now sweet or they could, or they could just give an option to add subcharts. <laughs> <laughs> that would yeah, work too. That would work as well. Uh, good, good <laughs> point. Um, so, so uh, anyway, um, all right. So that's order book, um, uh, just order book pressure, okay, OP. Uh, and again, this is by buying and selling. Uh, and it's like it's this complexity here between the four. There's four different outputs here, right? So now uh, let's close this one uh, and then go and open up the uh, order book and balance. Okay, so that's going to be buy minus sell, uh, which is it's very similar to what we've had from the uh, MBO bundle for quite a while. Is the um, liquidity uh, uh, tracker? Uh, it, it's actually quite quite similar uh, to that. Um, and uh, here's market pulse, and we'll select uh, order book and balance. Okay. Now note as well, I can add multiple in here for an order book. This is great. So you, if you want to look at, you know, a correlation, uh, you, you can do that. Now it's gonna, it actually takes quite a bit of um, memory on that. So be careful uh, on that. Uh, you know. You don't want to kind of overburden your, your system. Um, so yeah, buy my sell and it'll, it'll have that output of the kind of ring uh, again here. Uh, and it'll show you where the imbalances are um, in uh, buy minus sell in liquidity. Uh, and also there's another setting in here. I forgot to go over this. Um, that's important is the half-life of the intervals that is calculating. Okay, this is an additional uh, input here. Uh, what this means is right now I have it on four, it's by default. We haven't played around with any of these settings yet. Uh, I, I'll leave that to you guys to play around with it. I would I would suggest that you match up the subchart with some of the extreme readings that you're getting in the price action. Uh, that's, you know, you, that may be a, a daily event or maybe even, you know, depending on the day, maybe you have to change it a few times uh, due to fundamental data or something. Uh, so uh, play around with the settings. This additional setting in here is all about the order book. And what this means is on the half-life for four, 
what that means is if I look at the order book in here, the first four levels will be the most important levels in the order book. Uh, the next four after that are weighted half as important as the first four. And then the next four after that are half as important as the previous level. Okay, so as a fall off rate. Uh, make, make sense or any questions on that? Uh, so, it, it, you know, think of it kind of like a, um, an exponential moving average or something. Like as you're going further away, uh, this data will have um, less, less, importance. Less, less impact. Yeah, right. exactly. But it's still being inputted though, right? So, um, and play around with it uh, as well uh, to, to whatever you prefer. Uh, and uh, you can also get it here. Now, this is showing the, um, you can hover over the little, uh, uh, you know, info uh, button here. Uh, and it tells you what line this is showing here. Okay, so it, this is showing the delta um, of the um, uh, absolute buyers uh, and sellers over time. And then I just want to look at delta, though. I don't want to look at the absolute, right? I want to get, I, I like the extreme reading, so you may have to switch over to that uh, here. Uh, and uh, I, there we go. All right, so here we got an order book and balance uh, on the sell side. Okay, so a lot more on the sell side down here. Uh, probably due to this, probably probably this in here, and they're pulling over here, you know, uh, and um, uh, and then start to match things up. Okay, am I at a level of interest where I might want to buy if I'm getting this kind of order book and pressure uh, imbalance here? And yeah, you would. This is this is a kind of a key area here and here are kind yeah, of look you know, they pulled off it twice, the, both times. The top of these right down there, they pulled. Yeah. They pulled. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, they're adding they're adding more here on the offer, and then now now they pulled, and and price is coming back up. Now you're getting extreme here uh, on the bid uh, underneath. So, um, it, yeah, this is it's just buy minus sell basically, uh, and uh, yeah, play around with this one as well. Very very similar to the liquidity tracker that we have. Uh, the different the main difference here are the settings. Um, and uh, again, it's on a five minute or inputted uh, training period. So maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 10, maybe it's five seconds, whatever you want. Um, as, so play around with the slider. Um, but um, uh, that's, that's the order book uh, pressure and order book uh, pressure imbalance. So we got volume pressure imbalance and order book pressure imbalance. So play around with these. Uh, and uh, this, to me, this is the magic formula. Uh, if you can understand this, you've got that context between the two. Just mm -hmm. look at your price structure and then look at, you know, the, the inputs in here. But in theory, in theory. Uh, but uh, that is all about that context. We've, you know, as you know, Scott, we talked about it for years and years in the webinars. Context right. between the aggressors and the order book uh, right. it, within the structure. As simple as that. So it's using everything, everything together, and, and coming up with you know ideas or important areas. And I mean, this is this alone is. And I've been a big proponent of not even looking at the damn order book anymore. But when you can see it in this fashion, it, it absolutely has it has an effect. Like you can yeah. just see it. I mean, maybe maybe you know for for you then you know dim it more. But you know you still can see these bigger levels in here. Uh, and you can look more maybe at the order book, you know, pressure and balance or order book pressure uh, right. and uh, uh, kind of manage your, your trades with that uh, uh, imbalance in here. Um, so, uh, all right. So if there's no questions, I'll close this one uh, and uh, we'll move on to the next. Uh, so let's see. Now we've gone through, we haven't gone through these. Li liquidity uh, uh, pressure here is only for crypto or liquidation pressure, I should say. Um, so this is, you know, how, we, you know, Scott uses the uh, stops uh, uh, indicator. It's very similar to that in crypto, except it's even worse. It's actually showing that the exchange is showing you where they're liquidating accounts, not just stopping people out. They are forcefully coming in and closing the position because that person has a margin call. <laughs> Uh, and they're disseminating that that data as well, and we can read it. 
Uh, so you can see, like, it's it's kind of sad to see, to be honest. You'll just see, like, liquidations on the way up, liquidations on the way down. It's not um, sad if you're on the other side of the... Yeah, I mean, trade. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, screaming, the, puke them out, baby, puke them out. Yeah, I mean, and then the market will test lower one more time. It doesn't get liquidations. Look for the, you know, the buyers to come in and move it back into the mean, you know. And now you're going to make me start. I've told you this before. And now I'm going to have to, you're going to make me, I'm going to be up all night long watching <laughs> crypto. Like, thanks a lot. Um, well, I'll, I'll be honest, like uh, right now, I think it was working um, and they had to update something. So it's not working at the moment. Oh, boo. Uh, so uh, uh, but uh, yeah, just just to mention that the, the that that's only for crypto here. Uh, now we went through order book pressure, order book pressure and balance. We went through price change, uh, spread change. Uh, very simple one. Uh, just, you know, show me the spread. Uh, uh, where it's changing here. Now we're not going to get much out of uh, uh, NASDAQ, but it'll be better than uh, um, the uh, uh, S&P, that's for sure. Okay, so, you know, maybe uh, you're, you're looking at a, a certain area where uh, top of a range or bottom of a range and the spread's starting to kind of open up and, and uh, uh, yeah, so I'm just getting way too many outputs here. I, I, I'm not going to get much out of this this indicator here on this instrument. Uh, so what, a spread between what? Between the bid and the offer? Bid and, bid and, bid and ask, yeah. So it's it's more for more volatile you know markets where that spreads opening and closing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, uh, that's the spread change. Um, yeah, maybe we bring it down quite a bit and let's take a look at it. Maybe we get something a little more out of it. And you can see it opened up a little bit right in here, for example. Also a little bit right in here, you can see if we zoom in. Yeah, we're getting it all over the place. So it's, it's only gonna be a tick or two anyway. Uh, for the most part. Right. Especially in a liquid market like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, yeah, that's the spread change. Um, let's let's move on. Um, we'll go to another one here. Actually, let's just close this. We'll go to the main uh, market pulse. Uh, and uh, we'll, now we'll go over. Uh, we have just a few left here to cover uh, is sweeps and uh, absorption. So now for these to work, this is an indicator based off an indicator, all right? So uh, this is that broadcast API that I was mentioning before. We need to come back up here and we first need to install. If you haven't installed it, go to your manager in here uh, and make sure you install absorption and sweeps. Okay, and did I, do I have them? Yeah, I have them both. If you don't have them, you'll see it down in here available for installation. Uh, and uh, now what I need to do is I need to go up to absorption indicator here and need to turn it on. Okay, it has to be on. Now, this is an interesting uh, wrinkle that we found through broadcast API. You, you guys are probably familiar with, I know you use them, Scott, uh, sweeps and absorption, especially sweeps. Yeah, um, sweep more so. No, I don't usually have absorption up anymore. I just look at the sweeps. It's pretty okay. much the same. Same it's block. pretty much the same thing. It's just that, that sweeps is for more than one level. It's exactly the same indicator. Uh, in fact, they were combined into one, and then uh, user said, I want to see both. So we made it into two. Um, so within 0.01 seconds, uh, the traded um, or the, well, the traded volume was greater than or equal to, let's say, 15 right now. That's that's what it's it's uh, I have inputted here. We have this, uh, if I check the box here, I cannot um, change the number here. Actually, let me, I'll change it here and then I'll go to automatic mode here. Okay, and see how it jumps up from five to 15. Okay, this tells me that I cannot input it here, but it's gonna give me the output for uh, volume was traded was greater than 15, equal to or greater than 15 in automatic mode which is based off of here, inputted value of 30 minutes with a standard deviation 
uh, multiplier of five and a half. Okay, so this is a way to filter. Uh, if you want to look at more uh, than 15, well, you, you know, you'd, you'd bring this down. Um, or I'm sorry, bring this up. Uh, and um, uh, there you go. Now it has to be like 32 uh, in order to get an output. Now, for this works great. And it's a really good way to automatically filter. However, the, the problem here is it will continue to reset if we the the market pulse indicator uh, if we add that on here so we don't want that so what we're going to do is we have to deselect automatic mode uh, and then uh, we're, we'll just put in 15 here um, manually so it's always going to be 15 it will not change okay does that make sense uh, I'll, I'll show you now what I mean uh, if I open up market pulse for absorption or absorption pressure uh, and press play It's going to give me a readout uh, when it's 15 or greater, All right? And it's showing again buying and selling here. Okay, so here there was 15 absorbed uh, uh, on the um, or 15 that traded very quickly, but only in one price level. Okay, 15 traded here uh, on the on the uh, bid only at one price level. Okay, so. Um, that's that's the output All right now it's, it, if I did not have this let's suppose over time you know the standard deviation changes the the, the output this would have to it would reset because it's based off of the indicator uh, so just to try not to confuse you guys I I hope if you see this always resetting that's what the issue is All right now there's more to this as well like, look at my chart in here. Uh, it's very, very simple. I, I have volume dots, I have my heat map, and I have my uh, best bid and offer. Uh, if I come back up here and I look at absorption, uh, what I've done is I've turned off the icons, the volume, uh, and then also the um, uh, show the trade dots in here. Okay. So it might be too much on the chart, and I don't care about all of these areas with the absorption indicator. I care about only this now because I've got market pulse. I'm just looking for an extreme reading. I don't need to have my, my chart with all these uh, uh, indicators or indications here of absorption. So what you need to do is you need to come in here and you need to deselect uh, showing that data. Okay, and then you'll get a clean chart, but you can use your um, market pulse uh, absorption. Okay, so up here, well, you know, there's a lot of sellers getting absorbed very quickly, uh, and, uh, and and price continued on up. Okay, again, a lot of uh, sellers uh, here, here, and here absorbing, uh, and then now we got buyers back up here. This is telling me that okay, well, and it's auctioning here again. I'm looking for a breakout here. Okay, based off of that, based off of this information that I know that they're buying up here and I know they're, they're even absorbing on the on the bid here. Okay, great. I'm, I'm looking for the, uh, uh, and, and they're still absorbing here on the bid. Wait, they're absorbing on the bid or the offer? What color uh, are those spikes? I, I'm, they're absorbing on the bid. These, these are, they're selling into and hitting uh, the, um, uh, 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 hitting the, the, the bid here uh, and, and so selling hit, right? Okay, so that's, yeah, so the, the spike's showing they're selling, but somebody's absorbing it. That's so you're right. saying you can combine that with kind of these market orders coming in, buy market orders coming in. This is where you can use your order book stuff too. So you yeah. see they're absorbing, they're absorbing the selling and they're, and they're, <laughs> there you go. It's like, it's great. and they're buying market buying like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like they're, they're absorbing. See, I would look for absorption on the offer up here. Um, uh, you know, but, um, uh, the, um, it, it's showing instead, like, uh, we've got the, the extreme reading here. 
um, of selling into uh, uh, the bids. Let me let me bring up the let me show you. It, it, it would probably be better here. Boy, I hope I have this right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so because uh, uh, it was a good it's a good example. Um, OK, so. Uh, no, OK, so that looks like I don't have it right. Let me see the dots here. OK, well. So there's there's sellers up here. Basically, what this is showing me um, in the absorption indicator is, um, yeah, I, I had it wrong. I'm sorry, the, the, my mistake here. They're they're buying on the bid here, and here. Okay, uh, th it, this did not meet the criteria to to go lower though. So it's this one that that got the uh, nod for uh, market pulse here. Um, but uh, what we have here. Uh, on the um, uh, on the offer is 52 traded very very quickly right in here in this big dot here, okay. Uh, and uh, so this was probably um, a um, an iceberg order I, I would imagine. Uh, let, let's turn it on uh, and verify it. Let's wait till it updates here. And it doesn't have to be, and but it was, it was, it was an iceberg. Okay, so very, very quickly, uh, the this amount traded here and here. Okay, they're they're lifting the offer, traded into this very, you know, 0.01 seconds, more than 15 traded. Okay, twice. Okay, it's, and there's we don't see liquidity around it, so so it must be an iceberg, and and it is. There's two icebergs in there. Um, uh, however, this this is where like um, uh, I I thought they were hitting the the bid in here. That my my error uh, on that. However, we're still seeing more buying pressure come in above this area in here, right? So I I would still, nonetheless, I'm still looking for they cannot absorb. All of this buying pressure. So what co what color is that right spike down. at the, the subchart right there? This is red. So that doesn't mean that they're the sellers are hitting the bit. Does that mean the sellers are absorbing the, the buying? So it it means that um, yeah the way the way that uh, the output here is, is correct. Uh, this is um, on the, I mean it's it's by the aggressor, but who who's on the other side absorbing it is what it, the output is. Right. So those are green, right? Those bubbles are green. These bubbles are green because the, okay. because they're they're being absorbed. right, and then yeah. so the sellers were absorbing. But you can that, still that is correct. You, you can still gain information on that if they're trying to absorb it, and then it moves away and it rips through them. Then it's like if yeah. it rips through them, it like they're able they're not able to absorb the all whole the whole market. Right. 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 So and uh, uh, and now we've we've come up here a bunch of times. Uh, they absorbed. Uh, price went back down uh, and then uh, we come back up they absorbed again here uh, but uh, there's still more buying pressure be, be looking for the breakout now right. well, after, you, gotta remember, this, you only have it set for 15 right if you set it for yeah, 150 yeah. now now there's a whole another ball game right so yeah. and that obviously depends on you know how you want to set the thing yeah I, de I personally would not be looking at 15 right i mean maybe at this time of day I, I want to see large absorption areas like yeah. 150. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I I, I use 15. Just I, I what I basically did was I used the standard deviation, um, uh, you know, feature here to give me 15. Uh, and then once I had 15, I know it's kind of filtered already. Uh, so that that's kind of what I did. Look at so this. Change, just change that absorbing. to 100 real quick for one second and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'll change this to 100, and and now what you'll also note here, this will reset, right? Because right. I'm changing it at the source here um, to 100. Try try putting it at a second. And there goes the there goes the loading. You so want to you want to look at one second, second of it? Okay. I, yeah, because I'm I'm betting you're not going to get a lot of. So well, with one second, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, we probably will. Um, you know, yeah, I'm saying I bet you're not going to get a lot of signals with a tenth of a second is what I'm saying. 
Yeah, that, but that's what we we want. It right, was, right. We want very very quick um, uh, amount of transactions which happen at one price level. Right. Uh, and then uh, you know where does that happen? And if we zoom out here, you can see like um, I don't know if it's reset yet or not. Um, we've got yeah we've got uh, just just uh, one output or a few outputs down here as well. Right, but look what happened. I sort of spread that out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you're, you're right. when they absorb there. You're getting pretty good readings. Got the um, liquidity, of course, and then the thing did drop 50 yep. points, 40 points. Yep. Yep. So, uh, uh, so yeah, you've you've got a lot of interest in here uh, on the sell side uh, at the moment, uh, but it, it, it's the, again this context in here, understanding this context using the absorption uh, uh, market pulse tool. Right, so you can imagine it comes up here, you're watching traded volume, you see the absorption, sellers are absorbing, and then you have your order book feature on where you see the bids are being pulled and offers putting, be putting I'm, I'm just getting hypothetical, I don't know if that happened up here, but it's, it's about using these, this, these things together. And then you can imagine if this was like a, a test or a port area that you're looking to get out, or maybe a retest of a, a size zone, where you're confirming, okay, I want to get in right here versus waiting for it to move an ATR back. This is good enough for me. I see they're absorbing here. I see they're pulling, they're pulling bids, putting in offers. All right, I'm getting in right here instead. So it's just like there's just this putting all this stuff together. I know it's a lot of stuff, but it's all kind of the same stuff, right? It's like the same principles wrapped up with these different indicators. Yeah, I mean, it, it's and and it, exactly what you're talking about going through this process what is this telling me uh, is really important so you know this is on the way up even though we we had some on that previous setting uh, we had um, you know some absorption and you know some of these areas or I forget where it was um, uh, may, maybe it was here uh, it, and it's still going up there's still pressure great okay well that means i i know that they're failing to absorb i'm looking for it to trade into this liquidity um and uh because i know there's more buying pressure uh that's what it's telling me uh and um uh and then after this massive absorption up here and high liquidity and now look at the pullback and here here's the the attempt for buyers to try to take this higher if I get sellers down here again, I'm, I'm looking for them to trade back down to where they broke out from, or maybe the swings uh, down right. below. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it's been it's back into the range now. So this is a false false breakout basically. Uh, and uh, you, again, a context putting that context together. And uh, now we're back up here, and are we finding buyers? Not not yet, but we're back up here. So there's still interest in buying at higher levels. Uh, I just don't see the buyers yet uh and i i would just wait until i saw the buyers uh and uh uh you know again looking at that context what about the the bid what about the offer the the depth right uh, and uh um, start, to look, start to look for that right so and again back to the order book thing that i keep i can't wait to watch so you saw last time up here there was a bunch of absorption people were willing to put in offers now you can use the order book here you know as soon as you see the actual buyers coming in with this view and then you see if they're pulling offers you're like okay well they're willing to be here before now they're not here now they're buying market buying i'm, I'm in yeah yeah exactly exactly they're they're above that that area um uh so um so anyway this is now again this is just absorption and this is, it's similar looking at the heat map uh as well as kind of similar looking at the icebergs too because you might see absorption which doesn't make any sense because there's no high liquidity. So it likely is an iceberg, uh, is more of an assumption. The beauty of the stops and iceberg um, data in the subchart here is, or on chart as well, is that it's it's not debatable. Um, you know, these are native CME icebergs that are transacting, uh, and that's just fact. Um, so uh, anyway, so the let's go over the sweeps one. Um, and uh, what that is showing, and we'll actually deselect that here, and we'll. I got I got about nine minutes for a hard stop because I got to go, but see if okay. you, however, however much you can cover. This it, has been awesome already, but. Oh yeah, it's it's really the same thing except you you know this better. Uh, it is showing uh, sweeps, uh, so um, uh, it, it, let's. Um, 
uh, let, let's go through it here. Um, so I, I have 45 here. I'm looking for a sweep. Uh, at least two price levels. So same thing, 0 0.01 seconds, 45 uh, at a minimum of two price levels uh, at, at least. Uh, great. All right. So that's up and running. Let's go to Market Pulse. Uh, and we'll turn this on now. It's going to be based off of that setting for sweeps. And we'll come in here and we will select. Uh, oh, so we went over sweeps. There's, there's again, two for each one for um, absorption as well as for sweeps. You have um, absorption pressure, which shows buyers and sellers, or we also have the imbalance. Let's go over the imbalance one for sweeps. It's a little more straightforward. Uh, and and might be more helpful for you guys. So the imbalance is always is always like the delta. It's the delta, always buy minus sell, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then now note as well, you can add more in here. Um, I can add also the ES here if I want. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, if I added sweeps to Apple and Tesla and uh, gold here then I could select those as well. You have to add the indicator though, that's important. And then you can select multiple. So if you're looking for like a, you know, a sweep of like, a, again, your tech stocks versus NASDAQ, you can you can do that. Uh, it's, it's really cool to have this uh, multiple uh, instrument feature. Uh, so now let's click okay. Uh, and then now we're just looking for sweeps. Uh, and uh, settings are all the same in here. Uh, as uh, as before. Okay, half-life training period. There we go. There's our output. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so you can see the uh, the sweeps. Um, so uh, yeah, the the book swept. Uh, up, up more than uh, two price levels up here, or, or I'm sorry, the it's kind of like a you know like a moving average or something. Um, over five minutes, this was an extreme sweep. Okay, over five minutes, this was an extreme sweep. Look how nicely it's kind of ca capturing uh, the, these uh, these moves in here. here here's a extreme sweep on the sell side. That's it, and buyers back up above it. All right, I'm looking for buyers to come back in here and trade up to 40. All right, and this is just an easier way to to, to see it in, in a relative way. Is, you know, you can see when you have the sweeps indicator on, you can see the quantity, but it'll say, you know, one time it's 150, another time it's 700. So yeah. then you got to sit there and say, okay, wait, is this a lot? This is a little, how many 700? With the, the sub chart, you can just glance at it and say, okay, this is by far the biggest sweeps of the day type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and exactly that you'll get these extreme readings. Um, but again, it's based off of five minutes sliding of data. So um, depending and depending on the volatility of that period, uh, you okay. may have to wait for it to calm down a little bit for your indicator to kind of get give you a better uh, output. Um, the uh, so so here that is again that context we just talked about like how to put this how do you, the use case scenarios in here here's a sweep to the downside and that's it are you kidding me and I see buyers back up above this range in here I'm right. looking for the buyers to trade up to here and and you know this is and now you can even look at your ATRs or whatever it is uh and uh you know here's kind of a a, a nice uh little um move here uh let's take that and let's see how does that relate to atr well maybe 40 is a pretty good area to take some some profit you know uh you can don't you don't have to do a measured move like this you could also use your price change uh together with your sweeps right it's just so many different things yeah it, it it really opens up uh all sorts of uh configurations awesome so what uh, any other questions there's got to be questions <laughs> no i think people are just no, i think people, their jaws are on the on the desk yeah because they're asleep but my, mine is like it's <laughs> I've, everyone's like, oh my God, this is a painful. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not painful at all. It's incredible. <laughs> like this is exactly what I wanted to, you know, this is why I wanted to do the webinar because now I can really start looking at some of the things that I think are important. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
and combine yeah. it with what I'm already doing. So that's yeah, I mean, make it stronger. It's, it, it's it sounds sounds perfect. I mean, like this is this is what's really important is to to play around with it now and find the use case scenario best for you. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. Um, uh, you know, during you have to play around with it and get kind of comfortable with. Okay, well, I'm really looking for this you know, scenario here. Um, and, uh, you know, I know exactly what I'm looking for and I want to see the order book change at that point or whatever it might be, or, you know, maybe price change and the order book starts to kind of flip. All right. Now what about volume pressure? So maybe you're looking at three or maybe you're a trader who doesn't care about any of that stuff. And you only care about maybe the uh, volume pressure of a correlated market. So maybe you're not even looking at, um, the, the NASDAQ here, you're looking at, you know, Apple or a combination of, of putting together Apple, Tesla, uh, Google, uh, NVIDIA, et cetera. And then you're just looking at that one in, for volume pressure and then trading NASDAQ. I mean, there's, there's many, many scenarios here uh, to, to figure out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, after this, another sweep right here, that's it. And there's buying above it. I'm not only looking for 40. I think you could probably trade trade through it here and maybe get a stop run to the upside here. Big, big stop run. Um, uh, but um, let's see what's the, that. Oh, this is high a day. So yeah, here we go. Um, all right. Well, that's that's uh, that covers the basis uh, or basics, uh, Scott. Awesome. This, was, this has been awesome. This is all, I just wanted to. Get a handle on what these other things are, and like I said, it's like having your own trading firm. You know, <laughs> developers come to you and bringing you this stuff. It's incredible. Like, I, I just hope my room understands like the edge that they have, or any anyone using Bookmap for that matter, the edge that they have over other traders. Like, just knowing about this stuff and understanding what's driving and why the markets are doing what they're doing. Like, this is it's just incredible stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's dizzying. Um, uh, <laughs> like some of the all these different things that uh, it's like, you know, I speak to Vadim on the add-ons team, and he's like, "Yeah, we're coming out with this." And it's like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> you know, um, he's a smart uh, cookie. So yeah, he is. He is. Uh, he he's really really uh, a valuable person. Uh, so uh, really lucky to have him. Um, so uh, all right, well, if there's no more questions, then Scott, uh, let's. Uh, uh, happy to do it again anytime. Just just let us know. Yeah, I'm going to be playing with it, and I'll be talking. I'll be talking about it nonstop from here on out, just combining with what I'm doing already. It's very exciting stuff. So, thanks for getting on with us as usual. Sure, sure. Um, there's one more thing here. Like, um, uh, if you go here, I'll put this link into the chat, um, or maybe it's better that I just show you here on the on the webinar because I don't know if you guys will get it if I. I don't have access to, to give you the link here. Um, so just go to bookmap.com uh, and then uh, click on the more button, go to the knowledge base here, uh, and then uh, go to the add-ons section here, uh, and then go to scroll down on the, on the left side. All the add-ons are here on the left side. Go to market pulse uh, and um, uh, read this in here. So. Um, it basically, it's free uh, to all users until January 31st. So go in, go get it, uh, install. Uh, is it going to be part of the MBO package, or is it going to be separate? Yeah. So what we did was um, we added more value to the MBO package, and the um, you get the um, if I go to let's let's go back here, uh, go to the marketplace. Marketplace add-ons, okay. Uh, then here, here's the uh, oh, here's your course. Um, hey. The uh, M MBO. So here here's your MBO bundle right here. So we're adding more and more value to it. We included Trader Map Pro and get, kept this price the same. So um, we also added, as you can see in here, Market Pulse volume pressure for free. So you're going to get that. And now if you want the other Market Pulse uh, add-ons. Uh, you can get them, uh, but you'll need to go uh, and subscribe to the uh, um, the bundle in here. Okay, so if I just uh, input 
uh, market pulse. Let's see. There it is. Um, market pulse algorithm bundle here. Uh, and uh, you, you subscribe to it here. So, uh, you know, for futures, you what did I uh, know that's oh for that's for the year okay or for crypto uh, or both um, so yeah this is this is how you get it here um, and um, uh, this these are all the bundles in here okay now this is for the year so you don't have to do that you can get it for the month uh, as well I'm not sure where uh, for the month I'm pretty sure you can get it for the month um, but um, yeah, anyway, you, you see, you can see all that, all the add-ons in here. So you get volume, pressure, volume, pressure, inbound. You get all the ones we just covered, basically. Um, we haven't updated the page yet. The reason that the the other ones aren't listed in here uh, right now is because they're in beta. That that's why. So the um, absorption and sweeps, uh, order book uh, imbalance, uh, and order book pressure are not listed in here yet uh, because they're still in beta. So go go get them for free uh, and just, uh, you know, go to this, uh, that link here uh, in um, uh, the knowledge base and you, you'll, you can sign up for them and get them for free and, and play around with them. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Here's a look at this beautiful breakout here. Crucialize ice for cell RT. 150 to contract. Yeah, right, right when I'm leaving, now the markets are going to go crazy. So that's... yeah, I mean that's what we were looking for, but I mean I was kind of surprised it did this little pullback, and then now we got the breakout. Uh, it, I mean this is it for the selling pressure. You know, it's just like okay, you guys, you guys are just playing the wrong game here. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> so so uh, this is this is what's happening to them, and you know they're getting it's stopped. Out, so. sell right. 150 anyway, by contract. Uh, all right, I'll let you go, Scott. Thank you. Happy New Year, uh, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll do it again soon. We'll do something again soon. Yeah, absolutely. This was great. Appreciate it, Bruce. Okay, thanks, Scott. Thank Take you care. Soon. Bye. You.